Hey guys, this is Spiffy Guy, and I am um, gonna do a quick little video here on how to make a Caldera clone. Okay, as many of you have seen in some of my um, my videos, I use my uh, Caldera clone here with my Coleman pot and my Super Cat stove. Okay, now the way that the Super Cat works is the pot has to sit on top of the Super Cat. So essentially, this Caldera clone here is really nothing more than a windscreen. But for a lot of burners, it actually acts as a pot stand as well. Okay? It's a pretty decent little uh, little invention. And what I'm going to do is I am going to make a Caldera clone for my Red Bull burner. Which, incidentally, the Red Bull, bur Red Bull burner comes out to be the same size height-wise as the Trangia, which is important because the clones, when you make them, the way that this works is it's designed specifically for the pot and the burner you're using. So you want to get the right height. So these two luckily have the same uh, same height and the same required um, dimension between the pot and the burner for efficiency. So I'll be able to test both these stoves with the clone that I'm going to make. And the type of clone that I'm going to make is called a flizzure. Okay? And it's going to be split right here so there'll be two sections, a top and a bottom. So that's what we're going to build today. Now, just a quick note um, the conical stove, which is what this is considered, is patented by Trail Designs. Trail Designs sells the Caldera cone. Okay? They make a, mo a bunch of different models. Um, some of them are split. They call it a fissure. Um, the clone version is called a flissure. They also make a, a titanium model that has a, an, an insert that you can put in and burn wood, making a nice dual fuel stove. Um, the instructions that I'm going to show you does have that option as well, although the aluminum flashing that I use I don't think will hand up to the uh, stand up to the heat of the fire. So. Let me show you some of the stuff we're going to use, and uh, we'll get cracking. Okay, so some of the materials that we're going to need to uh, build this thing is we're going to need a pair of scissors, okay, or something to cut the material with. Um, Sharpie is good for uh, doing marks. Uh, a fine Sharpie would be best. A hobby knife I found is good for scoring some of the fold points and making some nice curved um, cuts. And then, of course, you're going to need flashing. Um, in the U.S., I use this stuff that's aluminum flashing. It's designed for roofs. You can buy a huge, giant roll of it for about 20 bucks at Home Depot or Lowe's, and it will last you many, many cones. Okay? Another thing that we're going to use is we're actually going to use the computer for this. And I'm going to show you what we're going to print out. Right. To make the uh, clone that we're going to make, we're going to use a script. Okay, and don't let that scare you, but we're going to use the computer to come up with the dimensions that we need to make the template. Okay, and I'm going to put the links down below in the description to the software you need to install in order to read the file, as well as a link to the um, software, or the, uh, I'm sorry, the script at Zen Stoves. If you haven't been to Zen Stoves, it's a fantastic site with lots of good information on alcohol stoves and just building general camping stoves. It's a good site to go to. But what this script allows us to do is it allows us to take measurements of our pot in millimeters. So make sure you have a ruler that does millimeters. And we're going to create a template. Okay. And there's uh, different parts here. And we're going to put this template together. And I'll show you how to do that. And we're going to... Um, use the template to cut out our cone pieces and assemble it. This basically does all the math for you. There was a guy by the name of Captain Paranoia and he came up with this script and it's been going for a couple years and I found it. So big props to Captain Paranoia for that and I'll show you what we're gonna do. Okay, after you install the uh, software 
and you'll edit the, uh, the script file in Notepad and there's going to be some options down there and it's going to uh, it's going to say you know user uh, variables and essentially this is where you're going to put in the dimensions of your pot as I said earlier the uh, script or the, the cone itself is very dependent on the size of your burner okay and the size of your pot these two particular burners are going to have different dimensions this one the pot sits right on top this one we want about 24 millimeters um, above for the flame since this is an open chimney design so you're going to be able to input all that information into the script and print out some templates now one word I'm printing here uh, there's about 14 pages to the template not all of them are used so if you have the option to do a print preview you can only print out the uh, pages of the template that you need you could also print it to a PDF and then choose to print from the PDF and only print out the pages you need and that way you'll save some paper so let me lay out the template and I'll kind of show you what uh, what we're printing since I'm doing the flizzer modification I end up with a bottom and a top okay so I'm gonna need to print out two sets of the template so I have a set for the bottom and a set for the top okay okay once you print out your template you're gonna need to put it together now you'll notice that there's a lot of these little plus signs on the paper and what that allows us to do is it allows us to line up all the papers and then what I do is I tape them together so I have this template as you can see and I'll tape it together and what I like to do is I like to transfer it onto some cardboard like thin cardboard from a, a cereal box or I'll transfer it onto some manila envelopes and the reason being is there's a lot of adjustment and variables for the pot so I find it makes it good if you can uh, create like a little uh, prototype so I've transferred my template from the paper onto the cardboard I went ahead and cut it out and then I removed the template but I make sure to save it because I'm gonna paste or um, tape that template onto the flashing again to cut it out and make sure that I get a very good fit so what I did is I, I taped the template on here and I do some fitting you know and I, I, I do some essentially dry fit with your pod make any adjustments doing any cutting you need and once you're good and you feel like your template fits well with your pot then you can remove the paper part of the template and transfer it onto the flashing material and then we'll go ahead and cut that out right now after the template is cut out we need to cut our tabs there's a small little circle on each tab we're going to use a drill press to punch a small little hole in there keep it from splitting after we uh, cut the tab we don't want our split to run up into our the main body and also it should make it fit together a little bit better okay now it's time to uh, cut out the uh, the tabs here we've made our holes and pay close attention to the end tabs okay because you can see that this dotted line right here we're gonna do the fold um, and that's going to be our closure as you can see here's the fold one side folds in the other side folds in and um, it'll stick together um, on the first one I did all I did was basically just fold them over and attach them and it's not very secure um, so these tabs will work a little bit better so we're going to cut these out and we're going to cut these little V tabs out on the bottom one and on the top template and as you can see here I left a little bit of play here um, I need to kind of work and figure out the best closure with that um, on our template it's got the little notch for the handles to fit in um, so I'm not really sure if these two pieces you know one bends in one bends out and they they latch together and if they'll stay with the template it didn't work so well but I'm assuming it's going to work better with the actual stiff foil so uh, just be careful cutting them out the edges might be a little sharp so either wear gloves or be careful okay so I've cut out all my tabs here 
having that uh, small 5 30 second hole that we drilled in there really makes the tabs come out easy. I also pulled up the uh, template here and uh, used these dotted lines kind of as a reference and rolled this edge a little bit so it's a little rolled and it does fit together on the uh, with the tabs there. So what we have left to do on the bottom sheet is we have to punch the holes out. Now I tried using my hole punch and it's really not up to the task. Um, if you have an actual decent hole punch you could probably do it. I'm going to use a uh, quarter inch drill and just do the bottom holes but I'm only going to do them on one side. Okay, All these holes don't need to be cut. This is just a template. As you can see on this one right here that I made I only did the bottom line and I only did it halfway and the reason I did it like that is I could always turn this side without any holes towards the wind and it would allow my stove to operate more efficiently. Should I need more holes I can always just add a second row on this one side and the, uh, the holes on the top um, I did do all the way around and those are mainly vent holes so I think one row at the top should be just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and um, tap all these holes right here on this side and once we start doing testing with the actual burner we can determine whether we need more oxygen holes on the bottom. So I'm going to use a drill press and get those drilled out. Okay so we pull the uh, template off and our holes. Here's our tabs at the top and there's our connection might be a little bit off but uh, I'll play with it once I get the top part and we'll see how that all fits together so time to uh, do the cutting of the tabs on the top and get the handle scenario figured out okay so here is our mostly finished product we got the holes punched in the top holes in the bottom and it fits together now I did a lot of dry fitting in here and I I kind of cut this out to where my handles would fit in here. Okay, And it's important that when you're fitting the pot, you make sure you have water in your pot. You want to make sure that this is going to be squeezed together enough to, uh, to hold the pot up. I actually kind of bent these tabs in a little bit. Um, and all that I did here was these flaps actually just kind of fold together and they're held in place by the bottom piece. So when the pot comes out, you know, the burner will just go right inside. Now, the, one of the problems with the Coleman pot is these giant knobs, these rivets, and um, so you just kind of got to work it in there a little bit, and you just want to make sure that it's going to sit nicely, and your uh, stand is going to hold the weight of the water. That's the most important thing. So um, we're going to clean up the edges. We're gonna, you know, trim off any any sharp corners here, and uh, on the the ends, and just kind of run sandpaper over the edge, over our holes. Some of the holes aren't that great, so there's a little bit of sprue and stuff that we need to uh, just kind of clean up, and uh, then we'll give it a test burn. All right, guys. So I finished up uh, pretty much with what I want the um, the final design to look like. The, uh, the Coleman with these large rivets here, I really had to open up this wide. And uh, part of the problem on the Coleman is it has a very curved lip. It's not a rolled lip. So it does, it wants to slide down into the, uh, into the actual cone itself. So to combat that, I put in a little tab here, similar that I did on the, uh, the bottom ones. But just a single one up here on top. And that seems to work out really well. It uh, gives me, you know, the ability to basically take it on and off. Those rivets don't get in the way, and it holds secure with a pot of water on there. And uh, it doesn't fall on the burner, which is a, uh, is a wonderful thing. So that is definitely a, uh, a good boil. It's at uh, 9 minutes right now, and the, uh, I can feel the heat of the... Uh, the burner still going so I started getting some minor bubbles at about eight minutes but um, I'll probably call it nine minutes for a uh, full boil um, so not too bad um, 
I'll have to adjust the uh, the fuel consumption to start doing some tests. So that is pretty much the uh, the Caldera clone with the Flizzure modification. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and post them up, and um, we'll do some burn tests with this compared to the Supercat and see which one is the most efficient and go from there. So thanks for watching. Well, I guess one of the things I uh, forgot to show is part of the whole reason why I did the Flizzer modification as opposed to the standard full-size cone. And the fact that the two pieces can fit together, they roll up and they fit inside the pan um, or the pot that you're using. Uh, I got my stove, I got a spoon, I got a four ounce bottle of fuel with my little um, syringe that I use with, with eventually I could probably get rid of that um, and you know a bandana and it all just kind of folds up into the pot you know nice and snug and uh, you stick your pot in your pot cozy stick it in a bag and you've got your entire cook kit right there including that cone so nice little compact feature um, as opposed to the uh, larger um, straight cone. So the Flizzer modification is a really nice feature and it's worth the trouble. So anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good one.